Well, good morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Hope that you're having a great start to your day wherever you're watching from. You know, as a pastor, one of the things that I commonly get asked about is the dynamics of how God acts in the Old Testament versus how we see him act in the New Testament. It seems that God is very angry and violent in the Old Testament in contrast to the behavior of grace and patience of Jesus in the New Testament. And while I don't fully have time to unpack all of that this morning, I do think that the same concern may arise in the coming week or so of your Word for the Day episodes. Because as we walk through the Exodus story, we find that Pharaoh is not allowing the Israelites to leave Egypt. And so God is going to use a series of events called plagues to convince him to finally let the people go freely. And at first read, some of these seem very strange and random, and some of them seem very violent uh, and aggressive as well. But as we unpack some of the reasons behind them, we're going to see some more significance than what we may see just on the surface. So let's take a look. Exodus chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 14, it says this, And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he's going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile River to meet him and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. And you shall say to them, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go so that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, This you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that's in my hand, I will strike the water that's in the Nile and turn it into blood. The fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the rivers, the canals, the ponds, and all the pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in the vessels of wood and the vessels of stone. So Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of all the servants, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the Nile, and all the water turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile died, and the Nile stank, so the Egyptians could not drink the water from the Nile. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts and tricks. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went to his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And the, all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink, but they could not drink of the water. Seven full days passed after the Lord struck the Nile. Now, when we first read this, it seems very strange that God would say, hey, take all the water from the Nile and turn it into blood. And you can read a lot of anger and vengeance in the actions here, but there's a reason behind God specifically picking the water from the Nile. See, we catch in verse 17 that God's purpose of this was for Pharaoh to see and confess that God was supreme, that he alone was Lord. That was the motivation, not anger or vengeance or payback, but God had an action here to show and prove that he alone was Lord. So how does the Nile River and the water play into that? Well, in that time, the Nile carried a great amount of significance in terms of the Egyptian uh, arts and specifically their pagan gods. The Egyptians believed that every spring when the Nile flooded, that that was the bloodstream of their pagan god Osiris, and it was that pagan god being reborn each spring. But beyond that, on a daily basis, there's a belief that the Nile is actually home to the god of Apis and the goddess of Isis. And they even believe that there was another pagan deity that acted as a guardian of the Nile. So what we may look at is just a large river and source of water. They saw not just as that, but as a place of deities and, and, and gods and goddesses to them. The, the home of Osiris and Apis and Isis, placing their faith and hope and these fake pagan deities simply because of the river. So that first plague, as we're told there in verse 17, was to show that those deities were not Lord, but the God of Israel alone was the Lord of the world. It's an attack and a dethroning of these fake pagan Egyptian gods. See, for the people of that time, they needed to see and understand that the things around them that were blessing them were not God. Even the thing that sustained their physical life was not supreme. The Nile provided so much for the Egyptian people. It provided water, it provided food in the form of fish, and even through agriculture, the Nile was a big deal from a survival and economic standpoint. So the blessing they had 
became a god to them, and they worshipped the blessing rather than the giver. And that's where our connection is today as well. As individuals, it's far too easy for us to take the blessings we have, our family, our health, our spouse, our kids, our jobs, our positions of significance, our stuff, and make idols and false gods out of those things rather than giving thanks and praise to God because of them. Now, you may not see it that way, but every time we take any of those blessings and make it the most important thing in our life, we make them idols. Every time we place our identity, our significance, our joy in anything besides Jesus, we have made that an idol in our heart. So let me encourage you today to look around your life and look at the blessings and the things that you really want to focus on as things significant to your life, but don't focus on them so much that you forget to worship God and thank Him for those things. See, the book of James says that every good and perfect gift we have in our life comes from God. So let's not worship the blessings we have, but the one who has blessed us with them. Hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.